Hello friends, welcome to Piping Engineers. In today's video, we will learn about pump BKW and motor power calculation. We will learn how pump BKW is calculated and further how motor power is derived from pump BKW requirements. So guys, for more updates and videos, please like, follow and subscribe to our channel. So let's begin our today's video and see the basics of pump first. So guys, what is a pump? A pump is a device that is used to move fluids, solid waste, chemical slurries by mechanical action from one place to another. So basically guys, pump is a mechanical device which moves fluids, solid waste, chemicals and slurries from one place to another with the help of some mechanical action. And to perform this mechanical action, we have to supply power to the driving end. So that driving end is our motor. So basically there are two components of pump. One is your flow and another is your head. So basically what is flow? Flow determines the amount of fluid that is to be pumped from one place to another. While head tells the exact distance or the place to which we have to reach our flow and this extent or distance is determined is known as head of the pump. So basically there are two types of pumps based on their operating principle. One is your dynamic pump and another is your displacement pumps. So for industrial purpose around 80 to 90 percent of the pumps which we use for industrial processes they are dynamic pumps and these dynamic pumps they are further classified as your centrifugal pumps, vertical centrifugal pumps, submersible pumps and so on and many more to come. And while these displacement pumps they are further classified as your gear pumps, piston pumps and low pumps. So basic difference between dynamic pumps and displacement pumps is how they are operated. Displacement pumps they are used for special operations if suppose if you want to pump some viscous fluid or some special type of slurry from one place to another we will be going for displacement pump. Either other than that dynamic pumps are mostly preferred in your industrial processes. So if you see here I have a figure here so this is how your centrifugal pumps looks. Centrifugal pumps they are basically of two types this is one type it is front suction and top discharge and in other side we will be having suction on side side of this side and parallel to this discharge will be placed here. So next is side suction side discharge. Another type of pump which is shown here is your submersible pump. So in submersible pump your motor and impeller they both are enclosed in this casing. And this casing is submerged in water so that's why it is known as submersible pump. And this is your lobe pumps. So basically these are lobes and with the help when these lobes move our fluid is transported to one place to another. One more thing for dis positive displacement pumps uh, the operating and maintenance costs they are very high. And also the skillfulness of your operator should be high. So if you if you want to maintain your displacement pumps, your operator should have a high efficiency and he should be enough knowledgeable to operate and maintain your positive displacement pumps. So moving on to next. Yeah, guys. So pump power terminologies. This is this is our main this is the main topic of our video. So basically, while calculating the pump power, we come across these three terms. One is your hydraulic power. Another is your pump shaft power. And last one is your electrical input power. So let's move on to one and let's see what these terms are in detail. So what is your hydraulic power? If we see hydraulic power there is no such term that is hydraulic power while we calculate pump powers. So hydraulic power is generally not used in any industrial processes. We when we talk about industrial processes either we talk about pump shaft power or we talk about electrical input power. But without hydraulic power we can't calculate your pump shaft power and electric input power. So what is your hydraulic power? Hydraulic power is the power that is communicated to the fluid of the of its passage pump. So basically this is the power which will be transferred from your pump to your hydro to your fluid. So this power is generally used to calculate pump shaft power and electrical input power. So the formula to calculate hydraulic power is rho is rho g q h upon 1000. So what this is Q here stands for your total flow. So this total flow is the flow of your pump. So this is the design flow of your pump. So this will be the Q here. H is the total head generated by the pump. Suppose selecting a pump, it's if, if you select a pump, it's 1000 meter cube per hour or at 65 meter water column. So here we will be having 1000 meter cube per hour converting into 1000 meter cube per second and your head will be written here of the selected pump. Rho is the density of the fluid. So most of the cases density of the fluid if we talk about water it will be 1000 kg per meter cube and if, the, if your fluid changes so while calculating your hydraulic power your density should also be taken accordingly as per the fluid which you which will be circulating in your pump. 
next g is acceleration due to gravity at a pump shaft power so it's the value is 9.81 meter per second square so when we have this formula which is ph is equal to rho g q h by 1000 we will be calculating hydraulic power so let's see what is the relation of hydraulic power with your pump shaft power and electric electrical input power or motor shaft power so your pump shaft power what is your pump shaft power pump shaft power is the power required transferred from motor to the shaft of the pump so suppose if you have selected some motor so there may be some losses due to the f due to the f, uh, due to in the pump and some losses in your motor so there will be a power that total complete power will not be transferred to the shaft to the pump so the power which will be transferred to your shaft after eliminating the losses that will be your pump shaft power and it depends upon the efficiency of the pump so basically the pump shaft power then we can we can originate it like this hydraulic power that is ph by pump efficiency so hydraulic power by pump efficiency we get pump shaft power basically pump efficiency uh, it generally lies between 75 to 85 or 90 percent depending upon your pump depending upon the type of pump you are selecting and depending upon your flow and head criteria pump efficiency varies but if we talk in a general line pump efficiency basically lies between 75 to 90 percent so next is your electrical input power electrical input power so this is the maximum power required to operate a system why maximum because this power will be in, in turn your pump shaft power and in addition to that hydraulic power so the power that that will be uh, required to run the system is my electrical input power this power depends upon the power consumption of the system yes the total power that will be consumed by the system is taken as my electrical input power so what is my electrical input power or motor power it is your pump shaft power so the power that will be taken by the pump to run upon motor efficiency so motor efficiency it generally lies between 90, 90 to 95 percent depending upon your ie classes the pump efficiency uh, motor efficiency varies so we are most but in most of the cases most of the vendors they supply motors at a, at a efficiency of 90 percent so while taking all these powers motor power will be your maximum after that we will be having your pump shaft power and the least will be your hydraulic power why because this power is the main main power runner source of my my system so there will be some losses so after that that losses pump shaft power will be attained and there will be some losses in pump also and the least minimum power will be transferred to my fluid so let's see with the help of an example how do we calculate all these powers so consider a pump of 100 meter cube per hour flow and 50 meter meter coulomb head Consider pump efficiency 75% and motor efficiency 90%. Calculate falling. Hydraulic power you have to calculate, pump shaft power you have to calculate, and electrical input power you have to calculate. So, as per the question, Q is equal to 100 meter cube per hour and head is 50 meter water column. So, as we know that if we want to calculate pump shaft power and motor power, we will we need to calculate this hydraulic power. So, hydraulic power Q into H into rho into G by 1000. The formula which we have learnt in our previous slides. So putting all the values Q here is 1000 meter cube per hour. So we need to change it into uh, meters cube per second because we will be having our power into watt and watt and power is power required per second. So head is 50 meter, power, rho is your 1000 kg mu and your acceleration due to gravity upon 1000. So this is our hydraulic power by putting all the values and calculating it. Hope you would calculate with the help of calculator. So we will be having this hydraulic power as 13.65 kilowatt. So now we have also given our pump efficiency is 75%. So we know to calculate this pump shaft power and in order to calculate this pump shaft power, what it will be? It will be your hydraulic power by pump efficiency. So hydraulic power we have calculated at 13.625 upon 0.75. So pump shaft power will be my 118.16 kilowatt. And now for motor power, the formula is pump shaft power upon motor efficiency. So pump shaft power is 18.16 and motor efficiency is 0.9. So this is my 20.18 kilowatt. So if we want to, if we want to select a system, we want to design a system, what will be the power consumption of the motor? It will be 20.18 kilowatt. So in any case, my motor power should be more than this. So the selected motor should have a capacity 
more than this so that this much power can be generated this much power is required by the motor so generally but motor motor selection is done by considering a margin of 10 to 15 percent on motor power so in order to have a safe design that because if, if in some case my system load gets increased so there should be a margin otherwise my motor uh, my motor get get trip or it may its coil may get burn or it coil may get disturbed or destroyed so in order to select the motor we take a margin of around 10 to 15 percent on this motor power and considerably according to that we select the motor motor size so motor size is calculated with the help of this uh, motor power and uh, as you would be knowing that we do not have a motor suppose if i am having lay, say i am having an uh, my power comes to 13 kilovolt so there is no motor size of 13 kilovolt so there are standard motor sizes so as per our calculations we have to select standard motors motor sizes select standard motors after adding this 10 to 15 percent margin so that's all in today's video guys so i hope you would have understood how do we calculate our hydraulic power, uh, pump shaft power and electrical input power and what are the relationship between them. So guys for more videos and updates please like, follow and subscribe to our channel. So thank you for watching the video. Thanks for the day.